Good morning. Good morning. And welcome to Million Dollar Couple Podcast. We felt today was the best day because we are overlooking it's blue so skies. Nice. And it's not been like that for the last couple of days. <laughs> it's been a, a, a miserable January in, in the UK yes. so far. Yes. Um, well, we timed it perfectly. There's yeah. almost not a cloud in the sky. Which it's is amazing. amazing. You can even see the moon uh, behind, yes. behind the laptop. Um, I <laughs> yep. don't know. It's uh, it's one of those things where I'm like a bit conscious of it. So we've got a really fancy uh, old clock up there. Uh, the owners of the apartment. Oh yeah. Have uh, have got a clock from like I think it's 1750. So it's really yeah. old. Um, and it still works, but <laughs> it's it's gone really loud all of a sudden. So we're thinking yeah. that maybe the time is uh, the time is up on the clock. Yes. Um, so if you can hear it. That's what that is. Uh, a little clicking in the background. It is a, a very loud clicking. I don't know if you can, uh, but if not, awesome. Yeah. Uh, let's dive in. So today we wanted to talk about lifestyle yes. and lifestyle business. Um, something that we think is probably in some cases somewhat lost on like the market of coaching and and people yeah. in business and also people uh, you know who who've got a career as well. Uh, massively important to us. And yeah. we wanted to to kind of talk about it, didn't we? Yeah, definitely. Because I think if we look back into our own journey, I mean, we've been doing personal development. Well, you've been doing personal development a bit longer than I have, but in the in the space, You're better at it now. coaching space, <laughs> um, you know, for like uh, for the last six years. And yeah. one of the real reasons why we kind of got started into the coaching space specifically was lifestyle. Yeah. I mean, I know that if I look back into my own journey, I was um, working as a hairdresser for, for 12 years and um, on your feet all day and working, you know, 40 plus hours a week. And while I was, there was definitely parts of um, my career that I was very aligned to. Um, there was the working style in which I really didn't like, um, you know, with the whole annual leave thing and not being able to dictate my own hours, those sorts of things. And then you start to look for another way. And I think mm. that was around the time when we got Baz, wasn't it? So Baz yeah. was about nine weeks old when we first got him. That's right. Yeah. Because I think that was the, if we look back now, I kind of forget about the timelines really. But yeah, <laughs> I think Sal was still at work. Yeah. I had my business. but yes. And yeah, I surprised Sally with our little puppy <laughs> Baz at the time. Um <laughs> bad time and it was but yeah no we we had Baz and I was spending all the time with Baz and yeah I was definitely the favorite as in Baz was <laughs> Baz because I was I feeding think. him I was yeah. you know I was with him yeah. all day yeah and um I was definitely the favorite and Sally didn't like that at no. all so that's why she quit her job really <laughs> well it was one of the big reasons because I was like here's Martin working from home choosing yeah. his own hours he was running events. He was part of a mastermind group as well that was going up to Port Douglas. And I was really new kind of into personal development at this stage. And I was looking at Martin, like he's living the dream. Like yeah, he's yeah. traveling around Australia. He's doing all the things that, it, I, you know, uh, he was networking with people who were in um, a similar mindset, which was such a, I was moving out of a realm where the mindsets were just sort of clashing. And I could see him just like living this incredible life. And I wanted a piece of that. Was I yeah. jealous? Yep. <laughs> um, that, by the way, Baz is, uh, I'm no longer the favorite with Baz. Like. Well, yeah. And so to <laughs> that's, Baz's that's point, the main thing. That, was, that was the other thing. So yeah, like I, you know, Martin was at home with Baz a lot and I was going to work and I was just thinking, why am I doing this? Why yeah. do I have to go to work and leave my puppy? <laughs> who is now six <laughs> um why do I have to why have we just bought him so that I just go to work and like leave him at home mm. and so it kind of started to spiral into this well questioning how I was living what I was doing and I I really wanted to work from home that was a big thing but I think like what I see anyway when I met Sally she was always I think some people value lifestyle I think some people value other things like some money, some um, like, you know, career climbing, like some people mm. are just, you know, they do want to stay in a career and they want to go from, you know, 
I don't even know the names, but like associate all the way up to partners, mm-hmm. things like that. And that that's cool as well. Um, but I think in terms of, you know, a lifestyle business, like I know that Sally was always, she would never do anything that cut into her time. Mm-hmm. And I think that was always something mm-hmm. I noticed because yeah. I, I was probably not the opposite, but I, I valued money also value in time so if I look at previous to Sally and then you know with Sally as well um it was very much around I always wanted to have Mm. money as in that was very important to me so that that's also what I class a lifestyle business because that's a value but Mm. I was never I didn't like giving up my time as well to a certain degree as in like don't get me wrong I uh, when I worked in a gym I was more than happy to um work the long hours you know 40 50 hours a week uh for for a number of years it's really hard works really hard but one thing that when I came to Australia I had to get a job for the like basically the first time in my life I don't know how old I was maybe I don't know 20 22 23 yeah and all of a sudden I had a boss. Um, and the the whole reason that I got into co I wanted to get back into coaching and I was going on to Sally's visa legally so I could leave my job. Um, but the whole reason I got into coaching, number one, I liked it. But number two, um, mm-hmm. I remember my granddad was ill um, and I tried to take leave um, mm-hmm. from, from a recruitment job yeah. and I couldn't get leave to go back to the UK yeah. um, to go and see my granddad because somebody else in my role was already off. Mm. Okay. And that's what we mean about, you know, kind of going off topic now, but I think, I think it's very, it's, it's, va- it's, it's values. Like some yes. people, you know, for example, um, some people don't get leave their granddad's mm. ill cool like that for me was the day when I was like no I'm I'm going back into my own thing because that's just not that's not in alignment like Mm. no nobody can control my time like I want to wake up every day the reason I love business is because if I wake up every day and I don't do anything today Mm. and then I don't make the money and I don't get the clients and I don't live a lifestyle that I want I'm completely in control of that Mm. and that that to me is a lifestyle business, by the way. Yeah. Um, that that's what I see it as. But at the same time, it's because of the value shift there. I was like, no, nah, I can't do this anymore. So when I left my own to create my own business within coaching, the first thing that we looked at with there's a there's a very famous picture of us sat down with our whiteboards and, yes. and planning our planning yes. the future yeah, I um, that recently. yeah and it was split into three different things um yeah. but the the main thing was when I started the business I didn't start that business to work long hours didn't start that business to to hustle and you know it was it was definitely uh some work and I definitely put the hours in yeah but number one from day one of what we've done together was lifestyle mm. it was about how do we enjoy this life that we have how do we make a hell of a lot of money how do we serve clients how do we how do we build a lifestyle that our past selves would have been jealous of yeah how do we do that but at the same time make sure that every day we're we're doing something that we love absolutely because there's so many things in well not so many things but there's things that come up in your life where there's misalignments and really that just means that there is a a a misalignment in values Mm. and when that happens so often and I can think about you know our own experience with that that's when it starts to it's like the universe starts to shove you into a new Uh way of doing things I mean at the start of my career would I have said I was going to start my own business no like just that was just not a thing for me whereas I I do think that was for you yeah I was never you're always a sovereign (laughs) you know independence like yeah, bad. You're really, yeah, that way. But I think, you know, through some of those misalignments, and we all have that, by mm-hmm. the way, in, in our own way, in, a, in our own life, then we start to look at, okay, well, how can we start to shift that? And that's what personal development really opens people up to. And it certainly did for us. 
And so that was when we started to look at the at the whiteboard and really get clear. When yeah. we were sat there writing that white on the on the whiteboard in our dreams, we literally came in with like this limitless thinking yeah. that we could have anything we wanted. And we believed it as well. Like yeah. we were stupid, really. Yeah. <laughs> um, Lots of our friends at the time were saying, This is really weird because you yeah. guys have been together for like a year and you're already like mapping everything out. And yeah. for us, it was very normal. Like yeah. it was, it was, it was weird that other people didn't do that, <laughs> that other people, you know, other couples and things weren't, you know, maybe that committed. But it's so true. It's like, if you, if you look at life, it's like you, you put your attention somewhere. It's like you either putting your attention into the next week or you're putting your yeah. attention into the next five to 10 years. Yep. Um, you know, we're, we're seven years into the relationship now. And like yes. so much of that stuff on that whiteboard has been ticked off yes. and, you know, some so, of it is so like, much some of it is some wow. of it's really what weird we yeah no some some of it was uh was not good um but, but I, again like yeah. you know it's just at the time we thought mm. we wanted certain stuff and yeah you know things like the money was way off like we thought we wanted x amount and it's yeah. like actually we need a lot more than that and yeah. it's some of it you know and um, you think you want I think we had golf courses on there mm. do you remember having golf courses yeah I wanted to own I, a hotel I don't play golf <laughs> I'm so oh yeah old. that's right at like the <laughs> driving range and like mini golf I'm that person at the end of the group that everyone's like oh my god just write 10 because but you're so bad you, no you did win though last time did we I? played mini golf you won the second round yeah you did <laughs> there we go you've there got you good go. memory I don't remember that but yeah. okay I think you so lost golf quite bad the first back. time but. <laughs> yeah so golf courses is back on the list now yeah um no but it, it's good like to do that kind of exercise it gives you some direction mm. and it gives you this idea of like okay well now we know what we want what are we doing like today that isn't <clears throat> excuse me that isn't in line with where we where we want to go and that's when you start to look at like okay there needs to be a different way here and sometimes yeah what what I find a lot of people do is that they they do that exercise but they change nothing about their day-to-day -day because yeah. those goals almost seem too scary or too big or they kind of think oh you know that'll happen one day but that was what was different to Martin and I, and I'm going to say you first, because that's when you started working with our mentors. Yeah, I, th I think that's, you know, if we look at that, that was the big shift for us because we've, yeah. you know, we get messages like genuinely, um, you know, on a weekly basis, <laughs> yeah, at yeah. least. I'm not going to say daily because it, it's not, but on a weekly basis, people message us and go, you know, we really love your life yes. you know I'd love to be, and some Huge. people are like some people are you know in a job and they just look at the freedom and they're like Jesus Christ like I wish I could have that yeah some of them are maybe in business but don't have a similar way of doing business mm. um and some you know I'm are making money yes yeah, so, I'm doing the numbers that inspire them but some are making a lot of money um you know I've, I've had a conversation maybe I was in yeah. London a few weeks ago um and yeah, some, someone was saying, look, I'm, you know, we, we caught up and making loads of money, but like, I can't relate to, uh, to their life in any way, because it, it's just so, so out. It, it's a different world to me, like, as in, you know, stressed, just uh, working a ridiculous amount. And it's like, that's also um, not something that I want. But again, um, you know, again, the conversation was like, you guys look like you've got it all kind of nailed yeah. and it's like we don't <laughs> for a start it's like we're always growing always but, evolving but one thing we we have done is we focused on what we want our days weeks months and, and mm. years to look like yeah like you know if you think if we think back to last year last year was a was a really uh, great year for us we did um after yeah you know the the world shutting down for us, it was a big focus to to leave Australia, mm. um, but to also to enjoy uh, Sydney's summer that didn't happen. Um, yes. It just rained, but we yeah. enjoyed the summer and then we went to Europe for Europe summer. And that yeah. was always the plan, uh, you know, stayed in many hotels, um, you know, traveled around, drove around yeah. uh, and it was really cool. But again, it's like, you've got to have the intention uh, for that. If you mm. want a lifestyle, mm. it's like, don't wait until 
I think people go, oh, once I make this amount yeah, of money yeah, yeah. or once I'm this good at something, it's like, then then I'll give myself permission to, yeah. to go and build a lifestyle business. It's like, no, you just, you're going to build a business or a life that you don't like first. Mm. And then you've created all the characteristics and values that you need to align to, to build a life that you don't like. Yeah. And then you've got to spend all the time unpacking that and going, well, what do I really want? And you're so disconnected to who you are. So yes. what I think is the reason why we wanted to do this, this podcast episode was I want to, I want to help people understand that it, it's possible. If you want to do this, it's possible from tomorrow. Yes. Um, so where, where do you start? That's the big question. Where do you start if you're not in business? Where do you start if you're in business? Where do you start if you're successful, but you want to take a step back and start to replan things? Yeah. What do you think is like, important? For- uh, okay, so where do you start? So I think sometimes when you're, I would say number one is your message. Like to have a lifestyle business is about what it. it it's the ve- so a lifestyle business is the you know the vehicle that's going to help you move into the lifestyle that you really want yeah. to 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 have, but it needs fuel. So mm. your fuel at all times, without you know throughout your career, throughout your personal development journey, is always going to be your message. You've got to have a message yeah. because I think some people come in and they try and dilly dally their way through and think it's about posting content and being consistent. But I'm like, it, it maybe is. And look, if you are a big guru and you can leverage off like your influence that you've already built, then, you know, there there's, there's a different strategy, but if you're coming up and you want to, you want to start shifting really quickly, mm. the fastest way is to get clear on your message. Mm. Like what is the change that you want to have on the world? what have you experienced? This is the big one. What have you experienced and maybe overcome yourself? Yeah. What is the big shift there? Yeah. Cause it's lifestyle. Like, again, like we go back to this phrase uh, and we certainly didn't coin it, but it's like a lifestyle business to me is, is like when, and this is probably again, depending on your values, my, my version of a lifestyle business might be a little bit different to Sally's. I I know it is, Um, but it's similar is like you have space in your day you're not over committing to too much in your business but also you're making you know good money uh good money is different to you to me to all of us um but that that's what a lifestyle business is to me and i value the time and energy to do what i want over yeah. what anyone else wants that that's yeah. what I consider a lifestyle business to be yeah and also working with great people who value your experience and value your wisdom and value you as a person and want to be around you yeah. because there's the other side of people uh wanting to help others who maybe aren't wanting to help themselves and then they make the journey together as a relationship um very difficult and mm. it doesn't need to be that way So I think also a lifestyle business is having the ability to choose and attract the right people um, who are looking for your help versus trying to convince them that there's a new way. Um, And and I think that's a big, that's a big thing. Yeah. And And your message helps with that. Your message is is I think going back to what you said, it's kind of like, you know, your experience again. Yes. Why, why can you why can you go from where you're at today again wherever you are it doesn't really matter why can you go and then tomorrow literally set up and and start to bend results bend time bend bend your growth like to a point where you're you know you're almost um unrecognizable in just a matter of weeks like again part of you know that that's not necessarily uh directly linked to lifestyle business but i think it is it's like everything you've done until this point is your result. Um, So with a lifestyle business, why messages is so important is how you can communicate where you think you can help people. And I think when you can do that and you can, 
you know, you can add frameworks and, and help people through it. Like you've got to be able to help people through it. You've got to be able to get people yeah. results. Um, you know, I think that is really important. But if you can do that and you are where I think a lifestyle business then thrives is you understand that you've done this really well already, but you're already 10 steps ahead because you're already you're teaching people what you've done so far but yeah. then you're already 10 steps ahead because you're trying to grow so quickly yeah i think that is and and that's where i think your message comes from mm -hmm. your message doesn't always you know I, I do find it somewhat challenging sometimes to go back to my previous years and be like oh this this is where i struggled and this is where i have to like i can mm -hmm. remember I just I don't really like being there either. So I think well, you've moved so far from yeah, there, you know? and I think that's the thing. So yeah. it's like your message is is more about what you're doing in the next twelve months than it is to um, than it maybe is five years ago, but yeah. also maybe not. Um, but I think that's why a message is so important. It's like if if you're focused on growth and you're focused on helping people along the way of where you've succeeded you know helping them kind of overcome challenges helping yeah. them avoid challenges that's that's the best one when you can help someone completely avoid it uh what i've found often is that you try and help them avoid it and they still go through it so you've got to guide them through anyway fine. uh make Tell you, you know take your own lessons yep. but again that that's why message is so important if you're going to if you want to build a lifestyle business i think that. I think that you've got to be prepared to be, I don't know what the word is, a creator. Um, you've got to be prepared to be someone who is willing to have a voice mm. of what and, and explain your experience mm. or or explain yeah. where you've had some success and and not be not be afraid of that. Yeah. Because that again, people pay a certain amount for information yeah people pay a lot more for people who've integrated it on a soul level yes and then can help mm -hmm. others do the same as well that's huge because i think you were just saying recently with the this rise in ai and oh, you even said wild. slightly <laughs> off topic yeah. yeah but not really because people like there's a whole heap of jobs out there which are not going to exist very soon yeah. but when you start viewing yourself as a leader as a mentor someone who can who who is who has a voice mm. who is there to help people that one-on-one -on -one approach or even in groups um with real people is not going anywhere yeah. you are always going to be valuable there's always going to be a place for you because people people want that People want to learn from other people's experience. Yeah. I think um, I was having a conversation at the gym a few days ago. Um, and, you know, my thoughts on the AI thing, I was like, you know, certain certain types of roles are going to be massively impacted in the next six to 12 months. Yeah. Like, I believe that online personal trainers, as an example, those who are giving out programs, okay, at the minute, they, they're they utilizing the AI. They can say, hey, write a program for this person. And it literally does it in two seconds. Yeah. And, you know, where that is right now is it will be a pretty crappy program, but it's doable and they can sell that and they can use it and they can pass that on to clients. Yeah. But where the AI is not going to come in is, for example, is somebody who, who gets deep into mindset, mm. um, somebody who has, you know, not just knowledge of a textbook, but how to specifically mm -hmm. help a client yeah. through the process yeah. and actually helps them to get, again, this is where bending results. I'm going to term that because that's uh, something yeah. that I want to talk about. It's like down. a linear result is, is not going to be enough when all these kind of AI technologies come in. It's going to be about how well you can implement that with specific people and I think people are going to pay a premium for that. So again, they it's like, do. yeah, exactly. They really yeah. already do. Yep. And it's about, you know, over five years, if you're focused on your personal development, you can kind of stack different skills. You know, I, I look back to, to my journey when I started in coaching, right? I knew how to, um, I knew how to run a business. Okay. So mm -hmm. that, that's what I got into, but 
where I learned skills pretty quickly. I learned how to run Facebook ads. Um, yeah. I learned how That's to email list. Burn, um, burn, <laughs> burn it down as well. Um, yes. But I learned how to build a brand. I learned yes. how to uh, sell run events. I would say that I could already sell. Yeah. I was going to say this, I was like, oh, probably, but yes, um, no, you, you absolutely could. Yeah. So there were so many. So there were so many skills to bring to the table. Again, this was like six, seven years ago yeah. now, but. So many skills to bring to the table, but then adding to skills really quickly. So the Facebook ads, that was something I tried in um, an e-com business and I'd done okay on it. It did work, but I hadn't got focused, you know, hired our mentors. They taught me how to do that properly. All of a sudden, I saw people who needed that help who I was already working with. So I was like, well, you know what? But you're doing well already. I can run Facebook ads for you. Yeah. What did that do? Well, it increased their results and it increased my value massively at the time. Mm-hmm. So instead of charging X amount, I was able to double prices pretty quickly. Yeah. And the returns were still, you know, I always look for clients to get a good return on that. That's just, again, my value. So what I look to do, that stacking results stacking result it doesn't matter that i had only been running facebook ads for three months yeah it helped clients mm. and that's really important again bringing wisdom bringing yeah. experience yeah. into how you can help your clients yeah. that again is attached to what sally said in message it's like it's really powerful yes having your skill set as well is also like incredible and mm. i mean learning along the way sometimes people uh, you know again they stop themselves from building a lifestyle business because they don't think they have all the things. They don't have the skill set and they don't have everything, everything in the toolkit. Like honestly, honestly just yeah. like but Sally ran Facebook like, ads. Like, like this I is the thing. Interest. I hadn't owned a business before. People were like, have you owned a business? Have you owned a salon before? You know, did you have, do you have a business degree? My dad, bless him, was like, you're charging how much? No, no, no. I think you should lower that because you're new. And so, you know, again, this is the the power of really hiring mentors. I have to, you know, really. We say, always bring them into it. Say it's huge, like huge thanks to them. Yeah, because I had no idea. I knew that I wanted to travel more. I knew I wanted a lifestyle. I knew I wanted to work from home. Um, I wanted time. I wanted freedom. I wanted all those things. I just didn't know how how to do that working as a hairdresser yeah um there is a way uh, for hairdressers out there but um that's what got me started into into coaching and i learned along the way i had never like written content before marketing no nah, i didn't know i had to learn like i learned and now she's that. the branding queen and now i'm the branding queen yes, yes. And, so it and, changes but yeah it does happen from I think initially coming into like going into your comfort zone, you don't have all the things you're never going to have all the things until you try and do something differently. Yeah. I mean, so many people say to me now, like, you know, it's crazy to see where you're at from like working in a salon for 12 years, Yeah. you know, um, but you just, you learn things along the way and that's what makes you even more valuable to people that you're going to help. Yeah. Whereas when we don't make those jumps, and it's not just one jump, by the way, it's a series and, and a continuous um, yeah. road of, of making jumps is through your own experience, you're able to help your clients through that. If we don't make those jumps, where's the value? We're regurgitating the same thing because yeah. we're sitting in our comfort zone and that's what actually makes the journey a lot more difficult. And this is one of the reasons why people don't get ahead or, or don't build that lifestyle business mm-hmm. and are in this waiting energy. So I think the first step to this is like, what is the message? You have experienced something, you want to help people with it. And the next thing I would say is getting clear on on what is the offer, because there's a lot of people who are sharing a message, but there's no offer. So people are like, wow, this person's super inspirational. By the way, this was me. So I know what that feels like because you have this message and you're just like, oh my God, I feel so powerful. And I want to like share this with the world and I'm consistent. I'm turning up and I'm saying all these things. But if you don't have an offer, you're just seen as this influential, like sort of thought leader, which is great. But do you want to get paid? And do you want to, it's not even necessarily about getting paid as well. But if you're not getting paid, who are you really impacting? Mm. Like, who are you really helping? 
because I know when I made that shift and then I started to see clients starting to live a lifestyle, starting to fill out their events, starting to go from charging hourly rates to, you know, premium uh, packages, you know, 10, 20, 30, 50, 100 K for their programs from hourly rate. Like it is freaking life-changing. Yeah. And that happened from really starting to get clear on your offer. Now, the other mistake I think that people make here is that they, they think they're missing the offer then they get the offer and then they just lead with the offer. Mm -hmm. And then they forget about the fuel. What's happened is like, there's a lot of offers out there, especially yeah. in the coaching market. There's a lot of people running retreats. There's a lot of people doing VIP days. There's a lot of people doing virtual events and all of that is great, mm -hmm. but they're missing the real person. Who's the person behind the offer? Yeah. That's you. That's where your point of difference comes in. That's why you want to get really clear on the message and not to forget that your message along with the offer is your, is your superpower. Yeah. I think the offer is, is everything. It really is. I think before that as well, cause sell you know, I think you're going to have different angles of where you feel like the most value, like Sally's mm -hmm. definitely kind of like leads with the message. And I think it's so important. Yeah. I think it's more important personally to have like the vehicle and I know Sally mentioned it before it's yeah. like you've got to have the foundations to to go out with a message and an offer and I suppose yeah. the foundations is the offer really but it's like yeah. you've got to have I think to build a true lifestyle business it's kind of like if you're going out there with the message and an offer and then you're selling it's like what are you bringing someone into as well because it's so easy to start to message offer and then bring someone in and then all of a sudden have all these all these different clients and all these different ways of doing things and you're helping people but it's like very quickly a lifestyle business can become a pain and it can start to become really heavy as well so i think message and offer is so important i think before even before even, even any of that stuff as well it's so important to have a business model isn't it well, like yeah. a lifestyle business model mm -hmm. because again there's plenty of people um telling you how to live life out there yeah i look at how someone's living personally and i go <laughs> right. right yeah you know i look at john on facebook selling me how to you know these are types of ads that i see okay um not anymore actually because I, I literally uh block i personally block all my ads um but it's kind of like john's selling how to fill up your calendar with 100 calls a week i'm like i do maybe one or two calls a week so the thought of yeah. having another 98 calls booked in um at different <laughs> time zones in the world like that ain't interesting to me. So yeah. I, you know, I am very careful and and I did get lucky. Don't get me wrong. I, I worked with uh, the mentors that we did. And I, I think that was very lucky because, yeah. well, it wasn't lucky because I looked and said, okay, well, <clears throat> that's how I want to live. Okay. They were, yeah. they were in Bali doing a retreat with like four or five clients. And I was like, yeah, well, that's cool. Okay. So I was like, I, no, I'd, I'd like, that, I'd like to be in Bali running a retreat. So that was what uh, I saw at the time. Yeah. Um. so again, I looked at that and I was like, well, yeah, these guys, you know, that that there's a hustle there. But there's also a yeah. lifestyle, a genuine lifestyle. Um, yeah. and I was like, okay, that's cool. Yes. So I think that's really important as well. If you mm. again, like what it means to you might be different, but to me, lifestyle business mm -hmm. so important to have the foundations, yeah, and then run with your message. And and that's not I to think, say no, I think you're spot on there because I think if you're clear with what a lifestyle business looks to you, mm -hmm. then you're not going to necessarily be seduced. By all like because social media is full of opinions, strategies, yeah. ways to get ahead. But if you're not clear on on how you want your life to look, how you want your business to look, what do you want the next year? But not mm. only the next year, but the next ten years to look, then it's very easy to be swayed on. Oh, like this person's doing 100k months, and then you go into their. This is what one of our clients said. You go into their program before working with us, obviously. Um, <laughs> and, you know, you send out a hundred cold DMs. You, and it's like, yeah. it's really, like, honestly, I value my time so much. I would rather be in the gym, like getting my, getting into the zone than be annoying people, a hundred people in the DMs wanting to, like, that's not what we're about. 
It's about living into the lifestyle that you want and start speaking your message. So you're drawing the right people in. It's, because it, it's you're, a creation, isn't it? Totally. It's like you found a way that you're living and you've got a you found a way that you can help people. This is, you know, again, voice, message, your offer. But it's like setting up your life where, you know, it is based around the things that you enjoy. Um, we're certainly not going to be telling you to go and send yeah. out cold DMs and annoy people because that, that quite frankly, is just well, it's, really it's annoying. It's not a lifestyle, is it? I well, think, it's not, no. Know, the, the client uh, Sal was talking about, yeah, it was very much, um, she liked, and I'm, I'm paraphrasing for her now, I don't mean to get this 100% right, but it's like, you know, she, she was inspired by the numbers this uh, mentor was yep. talking about which is cool. Like numbers are important. 100K months is is very attractive. We think, you know, I believe that everyone should be doing a million dollars a year, like yeah. to live the life they want. Uh, you can de disagree or agree. Um, so what she was inspired by was the numbers. But again, her word, she was sold into it. And then as soon as she was in, it was kind of like, it was just like hire a VA higher appointment setters um you yes. know move away from, like still coaching but <clears throat> you know don't do don't yeah. do deep work do quantity work and yeah. and again that's all good like and I don't know how to do that by the way I've never done it so I can't talk about that but the way I look at it is why don't you focus on the deep work and you know we work maybe I don't know I'm gonna say four to eight hours a week um yeah, sometimes less and but in that time we're really productive um you know this podcast um is just sharing the value of that and if we need to we'll work more but again like outside of that sally mentioned the gym you know we're trained like we're both training two days two times a day at the minute every um, morning we're like are we steady yeah. yet i'm getting up at 4 30 in the morning and sal's Before doing me. it like yeah sal's doing it later on yeah like and I've done that before as well. So it's not, it's not new. It's just, again, it's, it's a phase that I'm really committed to yeah. right now. So I'm doing the work. And what I would say is if I was waking up and having to, you know, build my day around calls and, and marketing and sending messages, all those things, I don't think I would enjoy that. Whereas at the minute, went to the gym this morning, 4.30, mm, you know, back home, back home for six, we had, we sat at the table, we had a coffee, yep. we were jamming, we were like, man, we should have recorded this conversation, it was yes. huge, and then it was like, well, why don't, and it wasn't this conversation that we're having now, it's like, why don't, Sally said, why don't we record a podcast, and I was yeah. like, yeah, let's do that, Yeah, we have all the time in the world, Yeah. okay, um, yes, we had, you know, we've got some conversations going on with clients. Um, I'm yeah. about to set up a call for somebody to come and join us. So there's things going on. Yes. But again, lifestyle first. Um, that's what's important. Today is a beautiful day. Mm. We will be outside at some point today, having a drive, probably driving quite quickly on the country <laughs> roads, um, windows down. One of Martin's favorite things. Yeah, exactly. Do. I love I love to go out for a drive. So why not? Yeah. Again, if I've got six calls booked in today or if I'm at work, I can't enjoy this one day of sun that we've had yeah, in January. Yeah. yeah, so then you start to uh, create resentment around where you live and what you do. Yeah. Not cool. Yeah. Not cool. There's, yeah, there's things to look at if you're, you know, misaligned right now or things are not, not working out yeah. um, because it, it really is quite a, a, a simple, um, a, a simple fix. Yeah, absolutely. I think, yeah. And again, like the, the purpose of today's podcast wasn't necessarily to go into detail on marketing or anything like that, but it's just to like marketing. I think yeah. that's the most important thing. People really like to, and this is why they call me the branding queen, because it's brand yeah forget marketing like i i'm it's not going live, to be teaching it? you any marketing like no that's not true we do have some we <laughs> yeah, do there have is some, some structures yeah there are <laughs> there are some structures but this is what i really i really feel quite strongly about because people like to really complicate marketing mm. and it doesn't need to be complicated what i find when it comes to the sales process and when it comes to marketing is that there's misalignments whether you know, on, on a surface level, on a business front, either you don't have time, you're not enjoying the clients that you're working with, or they're problematic, or there's drama in there, and it's just, you know, tedious. 
or you're not making enough money. Mm. It's usually those things. And it's like, you've got to look at those things because they are very easily fixed. It's just the mindset behind it. Yeah. The mindset that you're currently in says it's hard. Like, oh, I've got to wait until yeah. I get here or I've got to wait until I get a nice, nicer client or I've got to wait until I get enough money. We did not get here by by doing that. We mm. we sometimes had nothing. Like, I think we you started your business on like $200. I had $200 because yeah. I, I paid, um, I, I can't remember if it was 20 or 25, um, $25,000, let's say for my mentors yeah um followed by me yeah and then, second and then 25, uh, 50 grand gone yeah so 50 grand gone um i didn't have savings like i had to borrow as well yeah um, i think it was know, about six grand for me and my savings yeah but, so yeah. so we weren't we didn't have money we had you know we would never pay i wouldn't say we were paycheck to paycheck we weren't there no. but it was like mm -hmm. yeah we mm -hmm. invested outside of our yeah. means massively yeah. um and but I always say this to Sally because Sally was in Bali when I invested the money. Uh, so I was like, hey, I've just spent yeah. all our money, um, plus got <laughs> loans out, et cetera. And, but yeah, she was like, yeah, cool. Like yeah. It, there was always a back in there. And yeah. why? Because number one, I backed myself every mm -hmm. time. Uh, and number two, yeah. Sally backed herself. And um, Well, I also heard how, many, how much like he just wasn't enjoying his work. So mm -hmm. as a partner, I think for any partners out there, if you're holding your partner in a job that they don't like like i i'm not supportive of that mm -hmm. i you know the this for him to come home and just be drained and 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 want to start his own thing i had never owned a business like i i didn't know whether it was going to work but i backed martin and mm -hmm. i you got to back your partner because it's like there's something in there and they need you to, well, they don't need you to support them, but it freaking helps. Oh, it does help. Like it, did, it does was, help. And I think that was the thing as well, because never once was it like, okay, you've got to make this money back. Mm. Okay. I made it back in like two weeks. Yeah. It was okay. Really quick. Really quick. I um, was surprised. Yeah. Because. <laughs> but amazed. It, and because Shows it was all. It exactly. And this is, you know, we said bend results earlier, like. You know, we're, we're working with yeah. a few clients at the minute, start of 2023, and they're, yes. they're doing exactly that. Like, so a lifestyle business, what I like about it mm. is, and again, I want to be really clear, you don't have to be in business already, or you can be in business and already have a brand and you can already yeah. be doing cool stuff. But it's like, when you start to focus on lifestyle enjoyment and doing and building your days around what you want, yeah. and you have, um, you know, Sally and myself, you know, have a different value set on this, but also the same. It's like, yeah. if you have a message and the yeah. offer, which is what Sally values, I value the business model and the structure behind it. But if you have those two things mm. and, and other things as well, if you have those, you can bend those results and yeah. you can make more money than you made last year in two to four weeks. Like you can yeah. do that because yeah. again, your a lifestyle business is about using mm. your experience until yesterday and how can you help people with that? Okay. Where are you most successful? Bring that to your business. And then as you start to be more successful in how you're living your life, you can yeah. then share all the lessons along the way. Like, you yes. know, again, I look at all the things like, you know, I, I built a six figure business, seven figure business, then, you know, you invest and then, you know, you learn to travel, then you start going into, you know, all the taxes and all, yeah. all these things. Like yeah. there's so much stuff along the way yes so much stuff yep and it's like if you are focused on your personal development you'll learn so much that is so valuable to other people I, I agree I think it's like yeah focusing on where you want to where you want to go because what I was saying earlier was like marketing is not difficult mm. you make marketing difficult so if marketing is is you know it, and I don't even like to call it marketing because I'm not a marketer like mm. I just it, it, it's about brand brand mm. and brand isn't just about the visuals I like taking photos I like going shopping that's just my thing so I bring it into the brand but what it's just being yourself what brand really is is just having your voice and just sh sharing what what it what is important to you and what you've overcome and what yeah. you can help people with and sharing your mindset shifts um when people make the, and, and if if that part is difficult there's some level of incongruence yeah in your life 
or in your business. There's something you're not something you're hiding, something you're hiding, something you're avoiding. Um, because when you are feeling like you're progressing, you're moving forward, you're challenging yourself, you're learning, um, you want to give that. I've, I've mentioned that in, in a um, podcast previously, but you want to share that with people. And that's where the brand comes in. And that's when you start to think more creatively and you've got ideas that just come from a place of flow. Yeah. Um, and that way you're not needing to market. You're just sharing your voice and people are finding resonance with that. And that's how you attract the right people in. Yeah. I just I'm so excited about this because yeah. I like spend an entire podcast because that is how simple it needs to be. And it yeah. can be. It's just people I think like to, to overcomplicate that because when you get that, solidified and you've got your voice and you're sharing it and you're learning and you're growing and you're challenging yourself and you're investing into yourself at a high level you travel the world and mm -hmm. you're like able to help people wherever you are well, you are not stuck ever yeah. living your life uh, makes you more wealthy and i yes. mean on all levels like financially yes. like we you know we now get paid for living a great life like genuinely but yeah. we're also wealthy in new experience. Like, yes. um, you know, we've we've been to, uh, I don't know, about eight countries this year and each yeah. one has brought um, through, you know, new experiences. Yeah. And again, all these things are so important. And, and again, we go back to this, like why we wanted to talk about uh, a lifestyle business and yeah. living your lifestyle. Like make sure, um, I, I want to leave on this point. I'm sure Sal's got I much know, more, to, like, more to say, but yeah. it's kind of like, yeah. it's like, if however you do it is audit it it's up to you but look at look at your day to day what's lighting you up i don't yeah. think that needs to be like or is it easy definitely not that because some of business some of life is going to challenge you but it's like is this lighting me up when i when i complete this or when i do this do i am i left feeling better than when i started or before mm -hmm. i started it and i think that's yeah. really important again yeah you know, going to the gym at 4.30 in the morning is yeah. not my idea of fun, but I know when I've finished it and I'm ready for the next session, I feel good and my food's better, all that kind of stuff. You like the outcome. Um, I like the outcome. Yeah. And that's what I mean about, is it lighting you up? Okay, it might not feel comfortable uh, yeah. at the time, especially when it's raining. But again, yes. and there's loads of opportunities like that, isn't there? Yeah, absolutely. So I think if you've... Um you know, you've listened to us in this particular podcast and maybe you like the thought of this lifestyle yeah. business or maybe you've been thinking about it for a while or maybe, you know, maybe you've got you know, any questions, yeah, or anything. If you know that you've potentially made the journey a lot more like challenging than it really <laughs> needs to be, um, then, you know, get in touch because we're only one message away. And yeah. this is really what we love to- um, Like that one message away. Yeah, we really to love to help our clients yeah. with that because there is a life that is there for you to live. Yeah. And we just want to be able to see more people just out there killing yeah. it and enjoying their life, being happy. Um, and we certainly have the model to help and assist you with that. Yeah, 2023 for us is about- just letting people live a cool life. It has been every year, hasn't it? Really, um, we love it. Yeah, we we it's, really do. It's and so cool. There's there's depth to it. Um, yeah. You know, there's different levels to it. Um, yeah. There really is. But it's about wherever you're at. Uh, a lifestyle business is completely possible for you. Yes. Um, again, using all the skills you've built so far, mm -hmm. um, and I think that's really cool. Yes lovely thank you for watching you thank guys. you thank you for tuning in we enjoyed it hope you did too any questions send through yes um, and thanks for your time as always Cheers. awesome Bye -bye. see ya